All right, good morning. My name is Pilar de Jesus. Um, I am an advocate with the Community Development Project at the Urban Justice Center, but I'm also the president of East Harlem Preservation. I was hoping that HPD would stay. Um, so in, I also uh, live there, in- there, there are members from oh, okay. HPD here. Great. Um, I live in East Harlem, which is one of the areas that have been rezoned and been through a lot of gentrification. I've lived there for 38 years of my life. Um, and I'm really interested, I was really interested in hearing how HPD did, said that they don't, they're not aware of where these buildings, these vacant properties are. I've been living in my community for 38 years, as I mentioned, and the same Ross portfolio, I believe it is, that's been vacant for 40 years. We have, I could take you on a tour, and I really want, I'm really serious about that. I'm willing to give you guys a tour of all the vacant properties in my district, which is Ayala's district, and I'm, I'm not sure what her, where she stands with this, but I'm assuming she supports this because we have tons and tons of vacant property. And it's really sad because as we all know, we have this serious housing crisis going on. Tenants are being displaced. We got, what, 65,000 homeless people. These are properties that could be used to house people and it would be low income housing. It would be, it's rent regulated buildings, most of them, they're, they're vacant. And I, I don't understand why they've been vacant for so long. They're just sitting there. And these are the same landlords that claim they're broke, I don't know, you know. So HPD, I think that I would encourage that you work with organizations like mine, other community-based um, community organizations. Yeah, work with the community boards, but your community-based organizations are going to have that information because they are on the ground. They know, they're talking to the tenants. They're, they're there, we're there. And so, um, yeah, I support the 226 and 835 because yeah, it's a real serious problem with these landlords. So, Mr. Jesus, I want to thank you. What was the name of your organization again? Um, East Harlem Preservation. So, if you heard, the last question I asked was, did they commit to having the voices of uh, local nonprofits, community boards, and their council members, and they said yes on the record. So, so yeah, we're, let's go. We're gonna, we're gonna I'm going to give you my information that. now. I, I'm willing to, to do it this weekend. Thank or you. today. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Scott Andrew Hutchins, and I've been a member of Picture the Homeless for the past six years. May 25th, 2019 will be the seventh anniversary of my entry into the shelter system. I was quoted in an October 31st, 2014 article by Yadi Osorio in Liberation News titled, Most Expensive Homes in New York City Empty, saying, if you want to have pied terre okay, that's your business, but it shouldn't be done off the backs of others. There should be a tax on these homes. My position has not changed. Basic Civic says that your rights stop when another's begins. When your demand for expensive housing pushes record numbers of people into homelessness, your right to private property is secondary. Any right to make money from real estate is secondary to making sure that housing is available at every income level. I also stated in the article that what should be done with the money taken in those taxes, the money should be given to community land trusts. In the meantime, the city can work on finding real homes for individuals, stable housing. That's what we need. Intro 226 is a major step in eliminating the tale of two cities that de Blasio pointed out, but so far has done little or nothing to alleviate after five years in office. Even were it not for the fees and fines serving the purposes of taxation that I previously detailed, the registry of vacant property is of immense use to the city. It would create a ready pool of information about vacant properties. Information has been sorely needed for a long time and researched piecemeal by organizations such as Picture the Homeless in its 2012 foot count of vacant property reported in Banking on Vacancy. Yadio Soria's article also uh, quotes from an article in The Real Deal which states that the Census Bureau's 2012 American Community Survey reveals that 285 of 496 apartments or 57% in a three block stretch of Midtown from East 56th Street to East 59th Street between Fifth Avenue and Park Avenue are vacant at least 10 months a year. The number drops to the lower but still staggeringly high 30% when that range is expanded to 44th through 70th Streets. Homelessness is up to about 63,700 people as of November, and as my individual case demonstrates, it is primarily up to the hiring and payroll whims of those with wealth 
as to whether one can afford housing. There needs to be a price for pricing people out, and that price should be high enough to be a deterrent. We do not really have a crisis of homelessness in New York City. We have a crisis of greed. The housing is available, and the fact that so many are kept out is a public health crisis. Opponents are probably terrified that such a registry will lead to the use of eminent domain to house the homeless. As someone for whom higher education does not get me job interviews, I would welcome such a development and hope the city council sees the justice that that entails. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Committee Chair Carnegie um, and members of the Housing Buildings Committee. My name is John Krinsky, and I'm a professor of political science at City College and the CUNY Grad Center. I'm also a co-founder and board member of the New York City Community Land Initiative, a coalition of more than two dozen housing and social justice organizations that advocates for the use of community land trusts to preserve and create deeply affordable housing in stabilized neighborhoods, and on behalf of which I offer my testimony this morning. Since its founding in 2012, the New York City Community Land Initiative has worked along at, alongside its co-founder and partner, Picture the Homeless, to promote responsible property ownership in New York City and specifically to address the problem of warehousing and speculation in the midst of the most acute homelessness crisis the city has ever faced. In December 2017, the City Council passed the Housing Not Warehousing Act, which among other things requires the city to keep account uh, and inventory of vacant property, both publicly and privately owned. Uh, the act was devised and advocated for by Picture the Homeless for 10 years based on its path-breaking work documenting vacancies in warehousing and its 2012 report, Banking on Vacancy, which uh, Scott uh, mentioned, and also earlier pilot studies going back to 2006. There are therefore groups in the room with on-the-ground experience counting vacancies. Statistical models may be of use but as a professor, I can say that any good research should build on what's already been done. The Warehousing Accountability Act, or uh, uh, Intro 226, puts teeth in the Housing Not Warehousing Act by requiring property owners who have kept their property vacant for more than a year to register the property with the city and to pay significant fines if they do not. Uh, this would ease the burden on the city of conducting a census of vacancies, as has uh, been uh, mentioned by Council Member Chen. Uh, so I, I just want to uh, close by saying uh, that uh, Nicely believes that this is a fair and reasonable addition to the important work that the Council has already been doing to secure responsible property ownership in the city. I personally would like to thank you all for your testimony and the hard work that you do on the ground on behalf of uh, citizens, and in, uh, in particular people who are finding it difficult to remain domiciled in a city that's changing so quickly. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.